Hi, today we're going to talk about female puberty milestones. First, let's talk about the different types of sex. There are three types of sex, genetic sex, gonadal sex, and phenotypic sex. First, let's talk about genetic sex. Genetic sex is your XX or XY, X46XX being female, 46XY being male. That sex usually and typically determines your gonadal sex. Gonads can be either ovaries or testes. Those ovaries or testes make hormones. The hormone production during fetal development or the hormone production during puberty will determine external phenotype. Those differences will also be seen in the brain. And during fetal production of hormones, you get sexual differentiation of the external genitalia. That leads to sex assignment at birth and gender rearing. While at puberty, sexual, secondary sexual development is due to the production of hormones either from the tes testes or ovaries, which leads to gender identity. The genetic sex determination is made by, again, XY in the male or XX in the female. There are certain genes that are upregulated or downregulated depending on whether there is the presence of a Y. The Y chromosome encodes SRY. SRY will downregulate the genes that are important for female development, WENT4 and RSPO1, and will upregulate SOX9 and FGF9 in the Sertoli cells. While in the female, SOX9 and FGF9 are not present. Therefore, WENT4 and RSP01 will be upregulated. This will lead to a female phenotype. In the gonad, or in the ovaries of the female, oogenesis occurs. Oogenesis begins around the fourth week of gestational age. Around the mid-gestation, around 20 weeks, you will see that oogonia, the cells that produce eggs, will begin to make follicles. Those follicles will undergo a process called atresia, or apoptosis or programmed cell death, which will decrease the number of fo follicles that are present, which will continue to decrease throughout the life of the female fetus. Now, de depending on whether or not you have Sertoli cells that make AMH, or anti-malarian hormone, you will develop either paramesonephros in the female or mesonephros in the male. We both, though, start out with an indifferentiated stage, and in the female, paramesonephros equals the malarian duct. In the male, the mesonephros equals the wolfian duct. So normally in the female, you don't have AMH produced by the Sertoli cells, and therefore you make fallopian tubes, a uterus, and an upper third of the vagina. However, if you are male, you do produce AMH from the Sertoli cells, and those Sertoli cells inhibit malarian development, or paramesonephros. In the male, you will see mesonephric ducts, which lead to the epididymis, the vas deferens, and the urethra. Now, if your gonads produce testosterone or estrogen, that will make your phenotypic sex, or the sex that you show with your external differentiated genitalia. In the female, the glans penis will become the clitoris. The labial scrotal ridge will actually not fuse, and there will be an introitus for the vagina. You will have a labia minora and a labia majora. However, in the male, testosterone, DHT to be specific, causes the glans to become the penis, you will see that the labor scrotal swellings will become the scrotum, and that there will be a fusion of the labor scrotal folds so that you have a penile raphe. In the female fetus, in the first trimester, germ cell migration occurs. You can also see that there's a development of the external genitalia. The Wolfian ducts should degenerate, leading into the second trimester. There's development of a uterus and onto the vagina. Now let's look at male development. In the first trimester, you see that there's germ cell migration, spermatogenic cords. There's also latex cell development, which will make testosterone. There's differentiation of the external genitalia. There's also Wolfian duct differentiation. And remember that the paramesonephros, or the malarian ducts, will regress. You see here in the second trimester that we have testosterone synthesis.
and that will cause the growth of the external genitalia and the descent of the testes from the abdomen into the scrotum. Normally, you'll see pediatricians will check for the descent of testes at, at the time of birth.